also recognizing our female-specific docket graduates, our Judge Don Moody and uh, Erica Jeffers. <laughs> Amanda Goldman. Brooke Peavy House. 
Molina. Kevin Schrammick. Henry Spears. Justin Williams. <clears throat> Charlene Wisdom. Please welcome Special Judge Don Moody, and if I can have Sean Presley with the Courts Program stay on stage for the presentation of the Drug Court Mel Specific Don Congratulations. <laughs> Stephen Bruner. David Haley. Yeah. Ryan Hendrick. Michael Jensen. Hey. Rex Keeper. <laughs> Kelly McDonald. Michael Metcalf. <laughs> Jerry Moffat. <Yeah, I'm> Craig Poole. Ian Smots. <laughs> Cody Snodgrass. Thomas Sub. 
Hamlet. Jason Walden. And Daniel Young. Please welcome to the stage Larry Fugate, U.S. Naval Reserve and U.S. Army, Matthew Engelbach with the Tulsa County Courts Program from Veterans Treatment Court, John Petrick, United States Navy and Veterans Treatment Court mentor, and District Judge Rebecca Nightingale to the stage for the uh, special recognition of our Veterans Treatment Court graduates. It's an honor for me to be able to introduce our graduating vet veterans today, but before I do that, I would like to recognize, would all the uh, veterans in the audience please stand up and be recognized? October 1997, he served as a unit supply specialist at Fort Lee, Virginia. Private Brown received the Army Service Ribbon. James Caddy. Private James Caddy served in the U.S. Army. James was stationed at Fort Hill during his time in the Army, and his wards are as follows, Army Service Ribbon. Donald Cross. Airman Donald Cross. served in the U.S. Army from February 2005 through February 2008. His job was an infantryman and he was sent to Iraq. His medal and awards are as follows. Iraq Campaign Medal, Army Service Ribbon, Armed Forces Reserve <coughs> Medal with M Device, Global War on Terrorism Service Medal, National Defense Service Medal, Iraq Campaign Medal, Camp Campaign Star, and Special Support Taylor Evans received an honorable discharge. <laughs> William Taylor Rice. Private First Class William Taylor Rice. First in the U.S. Army Corps from May 1980 through December 1981 in Fort Lewis, Washington. His duties were as a cannon crew member. <laughs> His service medals include National Defense Service Medal and the Experts Badge with the M16. He received an honorable discharge. <laughs> Brian Mattenhand, serving the U.S. Army from 1977 to 1980 and was a vehicle mechanic stationed in Germany and at Fort Jackson, South Carolina. His awards are as follows, Army Service Ribbon, Good Conduct Medal, Overseas Ribbon, Expert Rifle with M16, and he received an honorable discharge. Travis Williams. Travis Williams served in the U.S. Army from May 2004 to April 2008. Corporal Williams served in Iraq and received the following medal and ribbons. Iraq Campaign Medal, Army Accommodation Medal with D-Device, Army Accommodation, 
Army Nation Medal, Third Award, Army Good Conduct Medal, National Defense Service Medal, Global War on Terrorism Service Medal, Global War on Terrorism Expeditionary Service Medal, Iraq Campaign Medal, Army Service Ribbon, Overseas Service Ribbon, Combat Infantry Badge, and Corporal Williams received honorable discharge. Please welcome to the stage Special Judge Tony Miller for our closing remarks. Okay, graduates, so what happens now? Where do you go? What do you do? Well, my favorite uh, columnist wrote an article about two weeks ago. He called it a moral bucket list. You know what a bucket list is? It's the things you want to do in life. The things you want to do before you kick the bucket, before you die. Most people think, go to the Grand Canyon, see a bullfight, jump out of an airplane. But David Brooks said, let's think about it differently. He said, let's create a moral bucket list. Rather than a, more, a, a bucket list of things I want to do for myself, let's create a list of things and activities and ways of living where I can help someone else. The reason, he says, because often we see when we do the things we want to do, buy the house, we want a bigger house. You buy a car, you want two cars. He says we don't live a fulfilled life. But when we start working and helping others, we find fulfillment. He gives the specific example of uh, a lady named Dorothy Day. Dorothy Day, in her uh, young life, was just a bohemian. She drank a lot. She caroused a lot. She uh, just traveled across Europe all for herself, but she was unfulfilled. Her life was not fulfilling. She even attempted suicide once or twice. But then, unexpectedly, and this is the, in the early uh, 1900s, unexpectedly, and really surprised to her, Dorothy got pregnant and she had a baby. And when she had that baby, for the first time in her life, she loved somebody else. And when she did, she didn't think about herself only. She began thinking about that baby. That change transformed her life. <clears throat> when she started thinking about other people, then she started thinking about even more people. Well, Dorothy Day then found faith. She started a radical newspaper. She opened settlement houses for the poor. She lived among the poor. She embraced shared poverty as a way to build community, to not only do good, but to be good. She moved from selfishness to thinking about other people. She moved from unhappiness to fulfillment. And you know today a lot of people have helped you. I want you to I hope you will think about that and begin to think outside yourselves. I encourage you to help someone else. So graduates, my wish for you today is to be well and to do good. Congratulations, graduates, and that concludes our program today.